spearheading the attack is Alan Carr. His daily fight against nicotine has propelled him far. This is my pride and joy. I have my Rolls Royce silver spirit. And uh, I never dreamed when I was a street urchin 60 years ago that I'd end up one day with one of these. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. He has made his millions by discovering his own holy grail for the hopelessly addicted, a guaranteed way to quit. You're probably looking at the worst nicotine addict there, there's ever been. The first thing I'd do in the morning, before I'd put a stitch of clothing on, would be to have a cigarette dangling from my lips. And that cigarette was stuck there just all day, every day, for 30 odd years. But one day, 20 years ago, Alan Carr saw the light. It was so easy, it was unbelievable. I went overnight from chain smoker to non-smoker without any withdrawal pains at all. And I've never had the slightest craving to smoke since. And I suddenly realised that, that this method would work for all smokers. Today, Carr is so confident of his technique, he's attempting to convince every smoker watching to quit by debunking four great smoking myths. All you need to do is listen, and you too could be a non-smoker. Smokers believe they need willpower to quit. Other methods concentrate on reasons why they shouldn't smoke. The health, the money, the slavery, the filthy habit. But smokers know all this, yet continue to smoke. Why? On the other side of the tug of war, it relaxes me. It helps me to concentrate. It relieves stress. It relieves boredom. Now, they're pretty powerful reasons to make smokers frightened to quit. But just suppose that smoking did none of those things. And actually, it impeded concentration. It impeded relaxation. It increased boredom and increase stress. Now, you've got four additional reasons to quit smoking. You haven't got a single reason to carry on smoking. Once you see that as it really is, the desire to smoke goes, and you don't need willpower to quit. Do let us know if this works. Smokers believe they smoke because they choose to. They can remember their first experimental cigarettes, but no smoker can remember the day they decided to become a regular smoker. That's because no smoker ever did. Ask any smoking parent whether they encourage their children to smoke. The answer is invariably an emphatic no. That's because all smokers sense that they fell into a trap and they don't want their children to fall into the same trap. If you've ever made just one half-hearted attempt to quit, you made a positive decision that you want to be a non-smoker. And if you still smoke, it's not because you choose to, it's because you fail to quit. When smokers quit, they believe they suffer terrible physical withdrawal pains from nicotine. Nicotine withdrawal is what smokers suffer throughout their smoking's life. And it's almost imperceptible, and it's the only reason they light the next cigarette. It gets no worse when they extinguish the final cigarette. The reason that smokers suffer is that they believe they're making a terrible sacrifice. And all substitutes actually reinforce this feeling. Substitutes that contain nicotine actually prolong the addiction. How can you cure addiction from a drug by taking the same drug that you're addicted to? It's absolute nonsense. Smokers believe that it's difficult to quit. Providing you realize that there's nothing to give up, you can quit not with a feeling of doom and gloom, worrying whether you've got the willpower, worrying whether the craving will go, but with a feeling of utter elation, knowing that from then on you'll enjoy social occasions more and be better equipped to handle stress. You look at other smokers, not with envy, but with pity. 
in the realization that the only reason they're lighting that cigarette is to try to get back to the state of relaxation that non-smokers enjoy all their lives. The one thing that prevents them from doing that is another dose of nicotine. Good luck. It must be the decision of each and every individual whether he or she will take the risks of smoking.